Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is why I ramble about tech and other stuff. So I started my YouTube journey on the 17th of April, 2020. And one of my first videos was a desk setup tour called Almost Perfect Work From Home Desk Setup Tour 2020. That's a mouthful. Also, almost perfect work from home desk setup tour, which means that there was room for improvement and improvements I have made. When I did the first desk setup tour, it was kind of at the beginning of the pandemic when most of us were all of a sudden forced to work from home. I run my own business, so having a decent office has always been important to me, but when the working from home started, I decided to double down on creating the perfect desk setup. Two things are very important to me when it comes to my space functionality and aesthetics. The first one is pretty self-explanatory. Things need to be there, they need to work, and they need to work well. The second one, aesthetics, is at least as important to me as the functionality because the space I'm in and the way it makes me feel really affects my work. Also, since my office doubles as my YouTube studio, I wanted it to look and feel as pleasing to the eye as possible to be able to create good looking shots for my videos. So this updated desk tour is gonna to be very much inspired by that. For the purpose of this video, being a desk setup, I'll focus on my desk and what's on it. If you would be interested in getting a full tour of the rest of my office slash studio, let me know in the comments and I'll create a video for you. This is a bit of a long one, so grab a snack, sit back and relax. Hope you enjoy the tour, let's ramble. So let's start with the desk itself, which remained pretty much unchanged since my last video because I really do love it. It is definitely the YouTube special, which means two Alex Rohr units with a giant Carly kitchen countertop, both from Ikea. The total cost of this setup at $450 is a lot cheaper than most desks, but you get this massive surface, which feels really sturdy. Two things I've changed about the desk. One, I went completely bananas with my beloved label maker because I kept forgetting what was in which drawer. So now every drawer has a purpose and nothing else is allowed to go in except the bottom junk drawer because let's face it, we all have a little junk in our lives. The second thing I changed is that I put everything in my office on wheels. Simply because it makes it much easier for me to move stuff around, which really comes in handy when I'm filming and have to move stuff around. What's also on wheels is this awesome chair by GT Racing. Now, I used to have a Mil Birget from Ikea, which looked all right, but wasn't great for my back. So I was looking to replace it. And when GT Racing offered to send me their chair to review, I have to be honest, I thought I would just review it and then sell it because I was not at all into racing chairs. I don't really like the way they look, but having used it for a couple of weeks, I decided to keep it and give away my Ikea chair instead. I'm still getting used to the whole racing look, but this chair is very comfortable. It reclines all the way back and it even has a footrest. I don't really use the footrest, but I would imagine someone who games a lot would really benefit from having it. It comes with two cushions, one for the neck and one for the lower back. I removed the lower back one because I have an arched back and it feels better without it. I can always put it back because removing the cushions is very easy. If you're into gaming chairs, I can definitely recommend this one. It's comfortable and it doesn't break the bank. There's a link in the description with a discount code for my viewers so you can enjoy an extra $15 off. I painted the wall behind my desk matte black, which I think looks much better than the bland off-white color it used to be. And it really makes the RGB strips on the back of my desk pop. I also installed some bass traps or acoustic panels because recording audio in a space like this creates a lot of reverb. These sound panels improve this a little bit as they prevent the audio waves from literally bouncing off the wall. Plus, I think they look awesome. Tucked away on the far left side of my desk is the beating heart of this operation. My specked out MacBook Pro 16 inch. It has an Intel Core i9 2.3 GHz processor, 32 gigs of RAM and eight gigabytes Radeon Pro graphics card. This thing is a beast and it cuts through the heavy 4K timelines I need to create these videos like a knife through butter. I know Apple just released their new lineup with the M1 chips, but I'm not yet convinced that they would actually beat the 16 inch in real life. And my computer is just a little too important to my work to be an early adopter. Plus this machine can still easily handle everything I throw at it. The only downside is the fan noise. It blows. No, 
My computer pretty much lives in clamshell mode and never leaves my desk. I have this massive iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is perfectly fine for most jobs on the move. And if that's not enough, I have my trusty old 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard, which I still absolutely adore. So there's really no reason to take the computer off my desk, but it is good to know that I can if I ever need to, like if I need to do video editing on the move. The stand I use is a really simple one by a company called Amaton. It's cheap, but really effective. It's nice and heavy so it stays in place, and the screws on the bottom let you easily adjust it so it can fit any laptop. By the way, I'll put links to everything you see down in the description underneath this video. Maybe you can get some nice Black Friday deals on them. Connecting my MacBook Pro to everything else on the desk is this little powerhouse right here. This is the CalDigit TS3 Pro Thunderbolt 3 dock, and this thing is a monster. It has its own power supply, which delivers enough juice to power everything that's attached to it, including my MacBook. On the back side, it has a whole bunch of ports ranging from simple USB-A ports to USB-C, Ethernet, and even a mini display port. What makes this thing even more useful is the easy access ports on the front, which makes it possible for me to mount it under my desk and out of my way, since I don't need access to the ports on the back once everything is connected to it. Now, in my old setup, it meant that I only needed one single Thunderbolt cable running from my MacBook Pro because my old monitor was driven by the mini display port. However, I upgraded my screen and this one is connected via USB-C, which means that I do need an extra cable running into my Mac. But that's a small price to pay for this beauty. It is the LG Ultrawide 34-inch QHD monitor with HDR. It's an IPS panel with really great color accuracy, which alongside its wide dimensions, makes it the perfect screen for video editing. To be honest, I never thought I would like an ultra-wide monitor. I got this purely for video editing because it enables me to see a very large portion of my timeline, so I don't need to scroll back and forth as much. But as it turns out, I really enjoy having the extra screen real estate for other work as well. I use an app called Better Snap Tool, which is a couple of bucks in the App Store, and I've had it for many years. It lets you easily snap windows into different parts of the screen. And since I got this monitor, I actually found out that the app also allows you to establish your own snap areas. So you can choose where your windows go. I designated three equal portions of my screen for snapping windows, and this has really improved my workflow, especially when I need to multitask between apps and windows. The screen is mounted on a simple monitor arm from Amazon. Underneath the screen are my Magic Trackpad, my Magic Keyboard, and my favorite mouse of all time, the Logitech MX Master 3. I use both the trackpad and the mouse because it makes me more efficient multitasking or video editing, whereby I use the trackpad for gestures and zooming and the mouse for precision and scrolling. The side scroll wheel is perfect for working my way through a timeline. Pulling it all together is this leather desk mat by Londo. I didn't want to get a mat that covers up all that nice walnut goodness, so this is the perfect size for me. It fits all three items, and I have plenty of space to move the mouse around. Above my screen, there are a couple of things I installed to improve my video conferencing. Most of us are working from home now, and a lot of our meetings currently take place virtually. The only thing worse than bad video is poor audio. We've all been there. We all have that one colleague refusing to get a decent webcam that sounds like he's speaking into a can in Morse code. So on top of my screen, there's a Logitech C920 webcam. It's not new at all. I've had it for years, but it's still one of the best webcams out there. Even the internal microphone is okay. They're not very expensive, although I did see prices being jacked up because everybody started buying webcams at the beginning of the pandemic. More important than a good camera, and every photographer will tell you this, is lighting. Typically, people face a wall in their office, and the only light hitting their faces is coming from their screen. And that is not a flattering light, nor is it sufficient to give the camera sensor what it needs. This is easily solved by installing a light right above your monitor, which you point at your face at a downward angle. I chose the Elgato Keylight Air, which was originally designed for streamers, but it obviously works just fine for video conferencing as well. You can control the light from an app, either on your computer or your phone. It lets you choose between daylight for that bright look or tungsten for a warmer appearance. And of course, you can adjust the brightness. I find that for most situations, I only need 10 to 15% brightness to make my videos look great. 
Next to it, there is one of my favorite pieces of equipment of 2020, the Rode PodMic. This microphone is the best bang for buck quality I've ever seen. At under $100, it is cheaper than most high quality mics, but it certainly doesn't sound like it. When I use it for voiceovers, I will attach this cheap pop filter from Amazon, which makes it sound even more premium. The rest of the time, I leave the pop filter off because I really like the way this mic looks, especially against the backdrop of a dark wall. The mic is attached to the Rode PSA1 boom arm, which is ideal for any desk. Whenever I need the mic, I just grab it and pull it towards me, and when I'm done, I just put it back. It's spring-loaded, so it basically moves itself. Because the pod mic is an XLR mic and not a USB mic, you can't plug it straight into your computer, so you'll need a preamp to translate the audio signal to your computer. At my desk for simple stuff, I use the Scarlett 2i2 preamp, which can take two microphones as well as headphones for monitoring. For producing YouTube videos, I use the Rodecaster Pro, which is just amazing. But for calls and quick voiceovers, the Scarlett is just perfect. The headphones connected to the Scarlett are the Audio-Technica M50Xs. I love these things. They're great for video editing or monitoring audio during a podcast, and they fit really nicely over my ears with these soft pads, so I can wear them for several hours without feeling uncomfortable. They come with a variety of cables, so you can use them with all kinds of devices. They've been around for some time, so you might be able to find a good deal for the holidays. I'll put a link in the description. When I'm not wearing these headphones, my audio comes out of these nice-looking speakers by Edifier. This is probably also one of the most visible changes to the desk setup. I used to rock these Harman Kardon speakers that I've had for many years, but that I loved so much that I just couldn't let go of them. But I finally caved because they did take up a lot of space on my desk and the cables were a little bit too short to move the speakers exactly where I wanted them. These are relatively inexpensive and I love the way they look. Most of my desk consists of warm and dark colors, which makes these white and yellow speakers really pop, resulting in a very cool contrast. The nice thing about these speakers is that they are Bluetooth enabled, so when I'm using them with my computer, I operate them via my Scarlett preamp. And if I want to play some music from the phone or the iPad, I just connect via Bluetooth. The sound quality is good, not great, but that is to be expected at this price point. Underneath the screen, I have the Hi-Rise charger by 12 South, which I really like because it charges my iPhone while holding it upright. That way I can see any messages coming in and always have it charged. The charger is made of steel and leather, so it's nice and heavy and feels really premium. What makes it even cooler is that you can take the actual charging pad out of the frame if you prefer laying your phone flat or to take it with you as a travel charger. On my right side, I keep this Google Nest Hub, which I've had for some time and I always liked it, but now I like it even more because it was recently updated with new functionality and a much better interface. It lets me control the lights in my office, I can see the security cameras in our house, which is especially useful when my five-year-old daughter is playing downstairs and I have to work up here. It allows me to keep an eye on her so I know she's okay. It lets me control my media like Spotify and you can even watch YouTube or Netflix on it. It makes calls, serves as an intercom with the other Google Home speakers throughout the house, and of course, not to forget, you can ask it all the googly questions your heart desires. To the left of my screen is this little iPad stand from Lamical, which, when I'm not using it for my iPad, doubles as a stand to hold up this beautiful piece of art by my daughter. And lastly, there's a few little things that live on my desk like hand sanitizer, nose spray, and this really awesome unboxing knife by Smith & Wesson, which I'm pretty sure officially makes me a cowboy. And of course, this sticky note dispenser because sticky notes. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my desk. If you got a little inspiration, that's cool. Thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe if you loved it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.